Hey, welcome to your first nunchaku class. So in this series, I'm going to be teaching the WNA, the World Nunchaku Association style nunchaku do. All right, so let's begin. Grab a pair of chucks. Ideally, you're using these chucks. They're made specifically for this style. Link down below. First thing that we're going to learn is going to be our gripping technique. Now, gripping technique is just really important because it allows you to practice catching the chuck. Quite often, stuff like this is going to happen. I didn't catch it. I didn't, I didn't catch it, right? So this technique is just helping you to be able to close your hand around the chuck and not have it constantly bouncing out of your hand, right? It happens a lot. It's gonna happen a lot, but this is a way to practice it. You also have to be able to do a certain number of these within a certain amount of time in order to be promoted to the next level, all right? So let's go ahead and just talk about the mechanics of this. We're gonna start with one chuck directly over the other. Now, when I'm letting go of this bottom one, I'm going to drop down the top one, push it forward, and I'm going to create this little circle here. And then I'm going to catch it right in the black. And now I want to make sure that it's going one directly over because it's a little bit harder to catch it when it comes at this angle, right? So I might miss my hand, it might miss my hand. But if I'm here, I can put one hand directly over the top. As I'm doing this as well, I want to make sure that I'm pointing the chuck away from me at all times. If I start to bring it in, something like this might happen you just hit yourself in the head. And that's why we're using foam chucks to start. If you want to use wooden chucks later, cool, good for you. I used to really love wooden chucks, but these ones are made for this style and they're better for sparring. It hurts a lot less, right? So give this a shot, circle this around, and try to catch it right in the black every time. Keep that chuck pointed away from you whenever you're doing this. And then when you start to get a little bit faster, it'll start to flow a little bit better, right? and then you'll start to feel more comfortable with it at first though. Just like this. Swoop it out and around. Swoop it out and around. Let it land in your hand and try to catch it. Sometimes you might mess up and catch it in the white. Sometimes it'll still just bounce out. Sometimes when you're going really fast, something like that'll happen. And that happens, right? Just pick it back up and keep going. One of the rules with nunchucks, at least with me, is if you drop the chucks, you're not allowed to stop right there, right? So say I'm doing some thing and I drop it, I can't quit there. I have to do whatever that is. Again, cool, I caught it. Now if I wanna set the chucks down and go watch TV or do whatever I wanna do, that's fine. But don't quit after failure. I know it gets frustrating, especially some of the techniques later on. Just keep going, all right? Don't quit, persevere. So let's keep practicing this. One right over the other, a little swoop. If I make too big of a swoop, all right? It can be difficult to time it, it can be difficult to catch it, and it's also gonna be really hard to make your time if you're making these big motions every time. Short and sweet, right? Small little circle right here. If you've ever done Wing Chun, it's kind of like the chain punches, but opposite, right? Just like this. So let's practice a little bit more. One right over the other, try not to go here. We'll practice stuff like that later. But for now, one directly over the other. And try to keep the tension on the string so as it drops, it's not all wobbly, right? So if I go too fast, I can make it so it kind of just shakes around. And if it's shaking around, it's really hard to catch, right? Here. Nice and easy. Drop it down, push it forward. As that swing's happening, pull it back. Now you will have a little bit of a raise up motion. I just don't want you to raise it too much. If it's 45 degrees, that's a little bit too much. And I might hit you in the head. It's not fun to get in the head, but it doesn't really hurt with these as long as you don't hit yourself in the eye. So just be aware of that. Okay, so that's our gripping technique. We're gonna come back to that a little bit later. I just wanted you to get that down first because it's important just to be able to catch the chucks, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is going to be our first upward strike. So one thing you're gonna realize about the system is everything's numbered. And it can be a little annoying at first. I was a little annoyed at first, but then I'm like, oh, okay, it's actually not that bad. You just have to take the time to learn the numbers. And through this series, we will take the time to learn and practice the numbers going randomly and you'll, you'll get it down, I promise, okay? So the first upward strike looks like this. So let's talk a little bit about this. Now, I'm going to let go of the top hand I'm going to raise up and now I want to go through my center line. So what I usually do is I look and I try to see the after image of the chuck, right? So as it moves, I see the little after image. I want to see that going through the center line of something. For me, 
I have a camera in front of me. That's what I'm trying to swing through. And then I catch it. Now, on the catch, I want the butt of my chuck pointed directly towards the front. I don't want it pointed off to the side. And I don't want to point it up. When I'm to the side, you can see that this chuck is horizontal. The top, the tip of the chuck that I'm holding is right to the outside of my shoulder. If I go over the top of my shoulder, it's gonna hit my lats, right? I'm not gonna be able to catch it, right? You see? See how you can't see it off to the side? So if you ever go over the shoulder, you're just gonna hit your back, right? The muscles on the back side. So it's actually gonna go directly next to your shoulder where the point of the chuck that you're holding is at the point of your shoulder, but off to the side. Most of the time, people wear t-shirts, right? And you have this seam here, right? For the sleeve, it should be just on the outside of that seam, okay? And that allows it to come right down here. And then I wanna catch it. Raise it up, right? Go, try to see it go right through that center, and then flip it over and catch it. Now, at first, this might happen, or this might happen, or this might happen, and you're not able to catch it. Just take your time. Right? Find out where your hand needs to be. Right? For some people, you might have to have your hand up higher. For some people, you might have to have your hand down lower in order to catch it in that black. Right? The goal is to catch it in the black. Now, if you catch it in the white here, right, just like I did, you can slide down and you'll be able to feel the seam where the white and the black touch, so you'll know when you're back into the black. And then reach out and strike again. Now, as we're doing the strike, I want you to make sure that you're reaching all the way out. Right? I'm trying to hit somebody in the chin. Right? Strike them in the chin, and then I'm gonna be catching it here. Okay? So we wanna get that reach whenever we're doing our strike. I don't wanna be here. You don't have T-Rex arms, okay? This isn't jujitsu. You don't have to keep your elbows super tight. Reach out. Strike through that center line each time. Make sure the butt of the chuck is pointed towards the front. This is on the outside of that seam of your shirt. This is in line with your back. And then you're catching it in the black. I know it's a lot of little details here. It can be a little confusing at first. Now, I used to do this a lot. And you see how high up this is. This is a lot of extra movement that's just not necessary. And my shoulders started to get tired because I'm raising it up. You don't need that here. And in this style, you're actually gonna be looking for this chuck being horizontal, all right? So make sure you're doing that instead of here. Okay, let's practice this some more. Just flowing through this. And again, this is our first upward strike. You might hear me call it upward strike number one, right? Up one, a few different ways of saying it, but it's just the first upward strike because I'm Striking upward. Crazy, right? The naming system is so difficult. Reach out and up. Try to avoid raising that up, right? Keep your fingers on it and keep it touching your palm instead of relaxing it where it has this high up grip here. Reach out and catch. Reach out and catch. Make sure you're practicing this along with me. Yes, you can watch it and try to learn, but if you're not practicing it, you're not gonna get it. Now, I understand if you don't have these trucks today, that's fine, work with whatever you got. Foam chucks, sock chucks, PVC pipe, whatever you've got, go ahead and work with that. But again, I do recommend getting a pair of the official WNA chucks, especially if you wanna spar with them. And they also make a lot of these techniques significantly easier. Okay. They're a little bit longer than the normal foam chucks that you'll find just on Amazon or most things. These are about 13 and a half inches long instead of the normal 12 inches. Okay. So it gives you a little bit of a different feel to it. Let's keep practicing this. Turn from the side to them. Again, if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. You're gonna see throughout this course, you'll see me drop it you'll see me hit myself, it, it doesn't matter, right? It really doesn't matter if you're making mistakes. The only thing that matters is that you don't give up. Just never give up whenever you're training. Keep going. Now, if you feel comfortable, you can start moving, right? This is kind of the next progression of this, is being able to just walk around. Maybe I turn, right? Maybe I do a dead sprint. That. I don't have enough space in here for that. But moving around makes it a little bit more difficult, especially cutting angles, right? So if this is too easy for you, maybe you've played with nunchucks before, well, then 
move around, make it difficult, find the little ways to adjust. I will be showing you different ways to make things more difficult or ways to make them easier, depending on what you need. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the first combination for us. So our first combination is going to be two grips, one, two. And then from here, I'm gonna let go of this bottom one and I'm gonna raise it up for an upward strike one. And then I'm gonna go back to two grips, one, two, upward strike one. So that's all we're gonna be doing. We're just gonna be practicing putting the two things that we've already learned together. Grip one, grip two, and up. Now, you will find that first grip might be a little difficult since you're on the side of your body and not on your center line. So it might go a little bit off to that side. So it might be kind of hard to catch it at first until you get used to that adjustment. One, two. You could try bringing it to the front first and then going for the grip and it might make it a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and let's work this combination together. One grip, two grip, up. Still making sure that that top chuck is horizontal, that the butter chuck is pointed towards the front and I'm catching it in the black. One grip, two grip, upward number one. One grip, two grip, upward number one. One, two, one. Now, if you need to go slow, go as slow as you need. Okay? Sometimes I get a little uh, energetic and I will go fast. And I forget the fact that not everybody's been doing this for you know well over 10 years. Sorry. This might be the first time you've ever used trucks. You might've just got a pair off Amazon or somebody bought you a pair and you're like, how do I use this? Let me go search a video on YouTube. And this might be the first video you watch. Hopefully. We'll see. Practice this though. But if I go a little bit too fast, don't feel like you have to keep up with me. If you wanna try, cool. That can be a little challenge for you. I will challenge you to keep up with me throughout this series, but don't feel like you have to. Everyone goes at their own pace. That's okay. Grip, grip, up one. Grip, grip, up one. Grip, grip, up one. Grip, grip, up one. Grip, grip. Make sure you're still reaching out as you do that one. Oh, I missed it. I can't believe I missed one. I should just quit now, all right? No. no. Grip, grip, up. Grip, grip. As you feel more comfortable, you can start speeding it up some. Grip, grip, up. Grip, grip, up. Grip, grip, up. Grip, grip, up. One, two, three. 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 And if I'm going too fast, just yell really loud and I'll hear you and I'll slow down. It doesn't matter if you're watching this, you know, five years in the future or whatever, I'll hear you, don't worry, I'll slow down for you. Okay. Grip, grip, up. Grip, grip, up. Grip, grip, up. And remember, as you're doing that grip, don't raise this up much higher than the center of your chest, right? Right where that sternum is. If you raise it up much higher than that, it can be a little bit more difficult, right? We want it to be kind of this nice, relaxed arm position here. I'm up here. For me, that's a little weird to catch. Right? My shoulders are kind of up. It's not that relaxed. So I want it to be in a relaxed arm position. Grip, grip, up. Grip, grip, up. Grip, grip, up. Cool. So now we've put together two techniques to make a combination. We're gonna actually learn one more technique today. Right? So this next technique is gonna be our first downward strike. Now, the first downward strike is a strike that I've watched a bunch of new people hit themselves in the back of the head while doing, okay? So I want you to be aware of that, and I'm gonna show you a drill to hopefully not hit yourself in the back of the head. If you are doing this for the first time, I recommend not using wooden chucks or metal chucks or even hard rubber chucks because you, you might still hit yourself in the back of the head. All right, so just, just so you know. All right, so the first downward strike looks like this. Okay. Now, the reason why most people hit themselves in the back of the head is because they're coming from one side of their body and they're crossing over to the other side of the body and they're not flipping the wrist over here, which means if I go down on one angle, it actually comes up the same but opposite angle. So I'm going, if I go down at this 45 degree angle, watch, it's gonna come up at a 45 degree angle, right? So a lot of people will end up doing this and just smack in the back of their head while doing it. And then after a few times of doing that, you'll see people start to <laughs> get a little scared of the chuck. I 
don't want you to be scared of the chuck, right? We have control over it. So what I'm gonna have you do first is just going to be a drill that I call the windshield wiper, okay? So let's start off, let's close the chucks, put them together just like this, and let's reach one hand to our opposite hip. Right? Grab that hip and put this hand on this side. And we're gonna do the windshield wiper, right? See, see why I call it the windshield wiper? It looks like windshield wiper. So this motion right here is what's happening. When I strike, I windshield wipe down. And that prevents it because I'm twisting my wrist. It prevents it from wrapping like this, right? When I windshield wipe. So we're here. If you'd like, if you feel comfortable, you can open the chuck up and windshield wipe. See? Notice how I'm not hitting myself from this side. I'm not hitting myself. And I'm getting my arm and shoulder out of the way because show you why in a second. Right. And now when I'm actually doing this, and after I've gone down, I should be able to windshield wipe, put my hand there, and then it falls right into my hand. When I'm ending the catching position, the back of my hand is pointed directly to the front. I don't want it pointed off at an angle, right? If it's pointed off at an angle, I'm gonna hit my back or my head. If it's pointed directly towards the front, I should be good. So the next step of the windshield wiper drill, arm is still across. We're gonna go down at this 45 degrees, and then we're gonna windshield wipe here, right? Boom. And then we'll bring it back to the side. Down, windshield wipe. And notice it should go past my arm. Now, one thing I can do is I can also do this with a stick. Right? So this is another easy way to practice this because that's that same motion, that windshield wipe. So I can go here and here. So if you do collie, and I also teach collie series, you already have a collie stick, you could do this motion here right? and practice that windshield wiper motion. But of course, you can just use the chucks and that's fine. So open the trucks up now, reach across, down at the 45, windshield, and bring it back. Down 45, bring it back. Here. If you just want to go here and stop and raise it up, here and stop and raise it up, that's also fine. What that looks like from the side. And now, I would actually stop here whenever I'm doing this catch, but I'm just gonna keep the momentum going for this drill. All right, let's go ahead and let's do the same thing on our other side. So start off, closed hands, reach across, and windshield wipe. Boom, 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 boom. Just to get this motion down. I know it's easy, right? You might feel, I don't need to do that. Just do it a few times, right? You don't have to do it super long. Windshield wipe, just like that. Okay, cool. Once you feel comfortable with it, Open hand, windshield wipe. Actually, we probably should do this side more because you're probably doing your non-dominant side now because most people start with their right arm. So this side's probably a little bit more wild, but that's all right. Here, here. So we're windshield wiping with the open chuck now. All right, just get this motion down. Get that idea of what needs to happen on the side down. Okay, now let's go from here down at a 45 and windshield wipe. And notice the speed that I'm going. I'm not going fast, I don't need to go fast. I just want you to get the muscle memory down. And you might catch onto this really fast, or it might take you a little while to catch this, to catch onto this, it's fine, right? Whatever you need to do, however long you need to do it, if I move on, just pause the video. This is on YouTube, it doesn't matter, right? Keep it going. You want to keep the flow going here you can kind of create this figure eight we'll get into figure eights in one of the later classes just make sure that windshield wiper motion happens when it's on your side cool go back to your dominant hand now what i'm going to do is i want you to windshield wipe and then i want you to put the hand there now look where i'm putting my hand at here it's the same height as the tip of my shoulder so I don't want you going way up here. I don't want you trying to reach up and catch it. I want it to fall into your hand at the same height. So give it a shot here. And then once you're ready, go here. You don't even have to close your hand right now. You can just practice letting it fall into your hand. Right? If you want to close it, cool. Sometimes we close a little bit too early and we jam our fingers. If we're not quite used to it, that's another thing that gripping drill helps with. All right, go here. Just doing one side, down, down, down. 
Now when you're doing this, I want you to try, instead of going 45 degrees, I want you to try to go a little bit more downwards and try to see a target where your center line is and strike down that center line. And just let it fall in your hand again. If you want, you can just keep the hand open. And it doesn't matter if it bounces off like that. Okay. Just let it fall into your hand and practice placing it there. Right? If we can place the chucks where we want, then we don't have to be worried about hitting ourselves because we're controlling where these go. And that's the idea of this. I have the control. I'm not trying to find it out here or, oh, maybe it's over here this time or maybe I'll catch it out here, right? No, we put it here. My hand is here and I put it in place, okay? Now let's go ahead and let's try the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna go here, windshield wipe on the side and we're gonna try to go here. Now notice my hand was actually a little bit high that time, which caused this angle, right? I wanna try to have it here. I wanna catch it so the butt of the chuck is pointed towards the front and the top is horizontal. Now sometimes if I don't actually catch it, it might be angled, but when I catch it, it kind of fixes that. So that is a thing, so just be aware of that. So practice just placing there. If you want to work on catching it, you can. If you want to work on just putting it into your hand and not catching it, right? don't even worry if it bounces out because then we start getting better at timing the catch, ideally, and boom, we're able to catch it. Sometimes it's still, Misses. Sometimes it's still, well, I was just gonna jam my fingers that time. It jams our fingers, doesn't matter, right? Just work on it. If you wanna work on catching it now, you're more than welcome to. Let's do a few more and then we'll start switching sides with this. Make sure your windshield wiping, make sure the back of your hand points towards the front. Okay, so now we're gonna be switching sides each time. So we're gonna strike downwards, go onto one side. Again, butter the chuck towards the front. This chuck is horizontal, so I'm not opened up outwards, not upwards, right here. Strike down and into that hand. Down and into the hand. And let's give this a shot. You're gonna miss this one. This one isn't super easy for a lot of people. Right? So it's okay. Just make sure you're doing that windshield wiper so you're not hitting yourself in the head. Because even if it doesn't hurt, like these chucks don't really hurt, but it can get frustrating just thudding yourself in the back of the head. You just get annoyed with yourself. Like, why can't I do this? Don't, don't worry about it too much. It happens to all of us. There's some techniques. There's one technique and it was a toss and now it's easy for me. But when I was learning it, it almost made me quit. I was just so frustrated how often I dropped the chucks. And I was just like, man, I don't even care anymore. I've dropped it like a hundred times. My back hurts because I'm lifting with my back, trying to bend over to pick this thing up. Ugh, right. It's okay to get a little bit frustrated. Just don't quit, right? Again, finish it. Do one good rep before you set the chucks down and walk away, okay? Unless you like throw the chucks at your dog or cat, then go check on your animal, right? That, that's more important. Also, you should probably make sure you're not around a lamp or a TV or an animal when you're doing this. They might walk into it and get hit. My dog likes to come up and bark at me like we're playing. And sometimes I hit him with the chucks on purpose in the butt and he, uh, he gets excited so I can't I can't use the chucks around him anymore <laughs> I've ruined it let it fall onto your hand butt of the chuck towards the front horizontal with that top one letting it fall into the hand all right so now we're gonna do another combination so for the second combination we're going to go Upward one, upward one, downward one, downward one. Up, up, down, down. Up, up, down, down. And like I said before, try to envision something in front of you or look at something. It could be me. You could be trying to strike right down my body or right up my body with the after image of the chucks. Pick something though so that you're not just over here and over there and over there and all over the place, right? Later on, I'm gonna show you how to use these for sport, for sparring, right? And if you're always practicing strikes and you know your target's here, but you're just swinging way off here, well, you're gonna miss your target every time, right? And it's not fun sparring when you can't hit a target ever. All right, so let's keep going with this drill. I just want you to keep that uh, idea in mind. Up, up, down, 
hit yourself, keep going, it's okay. Up, up, down, down. Sometimes you hit yourself in the leg, sometimes you hit yourself in the head. It happens up, up. Nope, that was about to be another up. Down, down. Up, up, down, down. Up, up, down, down. Up, up, down, down. If you feel comfortable, you can start to pick up the speed some. As you pick up the speed, you're more likely to make mistakes, right? So I'll try to start going at a speed, a higher speed. You go at whatever speed you want, and you'll see me make some mistakes, just so you know, it's okay. Up, up, down, down, up. Nope, hit myself. There we go, there's a mistake. See, it's okay, especially when you start to pick up the speed. Make sure I see my image that I'm going through. So once you feel comfortable though, pick up the speed, right? As much as you can. You don't have to go this fast. All right, a few more, keep going. I'm gonna slow down a little bit, because I'm getting out of breath. I am going too, too hard, too fast. This is my first class. I'm, no, not that good yet, right? Down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. All right, cool. So now I'm going to teach you two basic stances. There are five basic stances. We're just gonna go over the first two today. The first one, trucks clasp in your right hand, feet together, just like this. This is our attention stance or basic stance number one. I call it attention stance. They call it basic stance number one. You will notice I will make up names for things because numbers can be a little bit difficult to remember. Sometimes it's easier if you just make up names. So I made up some names. This is attention stance, pretty common attention stance in most martial arts, right? Um, they seem to be a little bit up with the elbows instead of completely down tight, right? So out here, just like this, attention stance. Stance number two is going to be our open ready stance, okay? So we're gonna go here. And we do this, I actually want you to step out if you're in your attention stance with the left foot, then the right foot. As we open up in our open ready stance, we want the top of the truck at about our shoulder level. Hands are in the black. And notice how my elbows are bent and not here. Some people do this, I'm not sure why. Keep it here. The reason why you want it with a little bit of bend is so I can strike. If I wanted to strike, I get hit, right? From here, what kind of strike is that? Weak, right? So. That was a little bit bent, not far in front of you here. The tips of the trucks at about your shoulder height. So again, basic stance number one, this is our attention stance. Basic stance number two, this is our open ready stance. I'll call it open ready stance because the trucks are open as opposed to here, which I will refer to as a closed ready stance. Right? Closed trucks, open trucks, makes sense, right? All right, attention. Ready, this is basic stance number one. And open ready, basic stance number two. Okay, um, I just want you to know it. We're not gonna practice that too much. Just there's a few little details on that. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do, we're going to do gripping, okay? So in order to earn your yellow belt, yes, they're belts. I actually use trucks, right? So the trucks color change, but in order to earn your yellow belt or your yellow trucks, you have to be able to do 40 grips, one, two, three, 40 grips within 30 seconds. Now, we're gonna practice this today. If this is your first time doing it, I don't expect you to beat that time. I started WNA after probably about, I don't know, eight years of doing a different style of nunchucky, right? Before I ever did WNA. I wasn't able to do 40 my first time. So if you can do it, I'm impressed. But don't be mad if you can't do it at all today perfectly fine. You might not be able to do it all for the next few weeks. That's fine. We're going to work on it and you'll be able to do it by the time the test comes. Okay. So we're going to start off gripping just like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a timer. We're going to do three sets today, 30 seconds. I'm going to count only for one of my sets. I'll count for my second set, but I want you to count for all of your sets. And I actually want you to comment whatever you get for each one of those sets. And now the comments is for you. 
me. So you can go back and you can see, hey, this is what I got. And you'll be able to see improvement as time goes on, okay? So I'm gonna put 30 seconds up on the clock and let's get ready on your mark. Get set, grip. One right over the other. Try and get as many as you can. Now, if you get 40 within this 30 seconds, don't stop, right? Because for the next belt level, you would have to get 50. And for the belt level after that, you'd have to get 60 within 30 seconds. And if this is your first time gripping, you're gonna think, oh my God, 60, that's a lot. And I thought the same thing. Uh, now I can consistently do it, right? Pretty consistently. Sometimes I still make mistakes because you know, I came at time. Sometimes I still make mistakes, but I can do it pretty consistently. And if you train and you follow all these ser video series with me, you will be able to do it. I promise you, okay? Let's take a breath. Shake out your arms if you need to. We're gonna get ready for our next set here soon. Again, highly recommend, grab a pair of these trucks. There will be links down below, depending on which country you're in. Uh, there'll be a different link for you, right? It makes a difference, it really does. That's, that's the reason I keep saying it, it really makes a difference. If you buy them from the one in America on Amazon, you're gonna be helping me out, just so you know, I do. I do help get helped out with that. All right, next set. I'm gonna be counting on this one. I'm gonna get in my gripping stance, All right? On your mark, get set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 64, 65, 66. All right. Um, so I was about to say 66, so I'll subtract from 65. So I think I got 64. Sometimes it's a little bit hard for me to feel this it's vibrating while I'm hitting my hand, which also causes vibration. So I, uh, I will sometimes go over. So I like to subtract one or two from when I feel it, just in case. All right, but you saw I was able to do it pretty, it wasn't super hard. Later on, it's not gonna be super hard for you either. Right now, it's, it's the first class. If you expect to be able to beat your time, these goals are to be able to earn your next belt. You shouldn't be able to do it on your first class if you've never had any experience. So, don't get frustrated, work on improving. That's the goal. We're just trying to get better, better constantly. All right, so now I'm gonna have a little shout out for a little you know, insert here. If you're watching these classes, I will release one class every week. If you want more than that, or you've watched through all of my classes already, I do have a Patreon that you can sign up for, and I have all my early releases in the classes there, so you can watch more classes if you've already watched all of them on YouTube. Eventually, all of them will be free on YouTube, but depending on when you start, they, uh, they might not all be there yet. So all the classes that I filmed and had edited, or even some of my unedited classes will be in my Patreon. Link down below if you want more classes. Okay, with that being said, Let's go ahead, we're gonna do our last set of gripping for today. On your mark, get set, go. Now the goal is to just be as fluid as possible. Try to be relaxed and try not to hit yourself, right? Sometimes you'll hit yourself when you're dropping the chuck down. Sometimes you'll hit yourself as you're raising it back up and you brought it in a little close and you hit your chest. In that last set when I was doing it, I, got, I still got 64, but I actually did hit myself in the chest one time. So it does happen, I just want you to be aware of it. So you gotta keep your distance with this. Don't bring it in too close, time. Or you'll do this, right, and it can hit. Now if you're just barely skimming your chest, you can usually catch it. That's typically what happens to me. If you're too much into it, it'll bounce back and you're not gonna be able to catch it. So just be aware that you can hit yourself. Try to keep it so it's not all droppy. If I drop and jerk it too fast, also not gonna be able to catch it, right? So smooth is the name of the game. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, right? Once we get smooth, then we can become fast with this. All right, guys, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly recap what we went over today. So today was our first class for the WNA style, World Nunchaku Association style, Nunchaku Do. We started off by learning our gripping, right? 
Again, this is just a really good way to practice closing your hands around the chuck and not having them constantly bounce out of your hands. After that, we practiced our upward strike number one. Remember the keys here, butt of the chuck pointed to the front, not off to the side, not upwards, and catching it with this top chuck horizontal, and we want to try to catch it in the black, not in the white. All right, after that, we did our first combination of the class, which was one, two grips, followed by an upward strike, and then back to one, two grips, upward strike. Most of the combinations will repeat on both sides. Then we went and we learned our next technique, which was our downward strike number one. Now for this, I showed you the windshield wiper drill, starting off by just windshield wiping, then an open windshield wipe, and then strike, windshield wipe, strike, windshield wipe, let it fall into the hand, and then alternating with the full downward number one strike. From there, we did our second combination. Our second combination was an upward strike, an upward strike, a downward strike, a downward strike, and then it repeated. After that, we did three sets of gripping, 30 seconds, trying to beat 40 grips. If you weren't able to do that today, it's okay. We're gonna work on it in the next class, and the next class, and the next class, and the next class. It's not going away. It's usually how I'm gonna be ending these classes. So just be aware of that. You will have ample amount of time to practice it, and you will be able to beat that time by the time the yellow belt test comes around. All right, guys, if you enjoyed today's class, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. It helps me out. It gets me shown to more people, and the more people that see this stuff, the more I enjoy making this stuff, right? It helps me out, all right? So go ahead and do that, and I will see you in the next class. Have a great day. Thank you.